Greetings DC fans, I'm Greg Elliott and welcome to Screen Rant. Now there are rumors swirling that a Joker sequel is in development, and while details have yet to be totally confirmed, it's pretty much a sure thing, especially now that Joker has made over a billion dollars at the worldwide box office. The original film study of Arthur Fleck's psyche is a concept that doesn't exactly warrant repeating, so any sequel will likely introduce someone else as an antagonist, or maybe protagonist, to oppose him. Now, Batman's the most obvious choice, but by doing that, you kind of run the risk of overshadowing the Joker. So, keeping this in mind, here's who we think from the DC canon could go up against Arthur Fleck. Although the movie did make you sympathize for Arthur somewhat, no sequel is ever going to make him the hero in the conventional sense, so putting him against another type of villain might be the way to go, and on the totally opposite end of the bad guy spectrum from Joker is Carmine Falcone. Don Falcone has a vice-like grip on Gotham, and he and the Joker have pretty different ways of doing things. The Joker clashed with gangsters before in The Dark Knight, but Joker 2 could explore the idea more fully, and maybe even more brutally than slamming a guy's head onto a pencil. And next is someone who may or may not be dead. There are theories that a lot of Joker takes place in Arthur's head and that the Wayne murders were just a fantasy he was having. Yeah, I know it's a stretch, but Joker already played fast and loose with the Batman mythology, so having Thomas Wayne secretly survive the alley attack and setting out on a Flashpoint-style quest for revenge maybe isn't the craziest thing I've heard. Well, maybe it is. So if bringing characters back from the dead is too much for you, then we've always got Commissioner James Gordon on standby. I mean, Joker is a criminal, and police hunt criminals, and Gordon is the most famous cop in the Batman universe. Do you really need much more than that? Now, the Gotham TV show has kind of already done this, and Jeffrey Wright has already been cast as Gordon in The Batman, but hey, it's a thought. So the last thing we saw in Joker was Arthur stuck in Arkham Asylum, but what if he got out? It wouldn't be too much of a stretch then to have him hunted down by none other than its head doctor, Jeremiah Arkham. Arkham is a fairly complex character in his own right, on one hand having a genuine desire to help his patients, but on the other hand being totally insane and eventually becoming the villain Black Mask. Having the two go up against each other would keep Joker's core focus on mental illness, but it would also have no clear hero or villain, much like the original film. Now, there aren't many Batman villains more despicable than Joker, but Mad Hatter certainly makes a strong case. In the comics, Jervis Tetz talks in rhyme and is obsessed with Alice in Wonderland and is, to put it bluntly, totally insane. He likes to mess with people's heads, which could play well alongside Arthur's already damaged persona, and it would be relatively simple to make Mad Hatter the villain of Joker 2 without making Arthur feel like the hero. The Red Hood has previously been a key part of Joker's origin story, and since then, Jason Todd and several others have taken up the name. Arthur's transformation into Joker didn't include any crimson cowls, but there's still a lot of mystery around his real identity. There's lots of room to play if you bring Red Hood in for the sequel. His identity could be hidden for most, if not all, of the film, and it could even be like a Fight Club kind of thing where they're the same guy, or that Red Hood is the true Joker or anything in between. Arthur's actions triggered a wave of chaos in Gotham, and that would definitely piss off the Court of Owls, the ancient shady organization that has ruled Gotham since colonial times. They don't really like it when other people stir the pot, and they have no qualms about taking drastic action to correct social order. In a lot of ways, they represent everything Fleck was rallying against in Joker, the creators of a system that turned a blind eye and left him to rot. Having the Court of Owls in Joker 2 could expand on the original film's strong political themes, although raging against the machine too hard does risk turning Fleck into a genuine hero rather than the symbol of rebellion that he became. We know that there are lots of villains in the Batman universe that Joker 2 could use, but we hope that you agreed with at least some of our picks. Make sure to keep watching Screen Rant to stay in the loop on the Joker sequel. I'm Greg Elliott, and I'm out. Peace.